let's get into our, our team selector then before we round things off here on this edition of the Blood Red podcast. And, uh, well, I'll say Alison between the sticks, Gorsty. What about the back four? Yeah, I think Klopp said today, I, I was sitting a few rows back, but he either said about Gomez, he, he will play or he can play. I'm pretty much expecting him to start on, um, on Monday night alongside Virgil van Dijk and um, Andy Robertson, who was taking up some interesting positions against Palace. I uh, don't know whether that's a new tactic where he's kind of breaking beyond the, the front man, not someone who you'd have down as being the furthest forward looking to stick the ball in the back of the net, but if they'll do try and stay unpredictable with their fullback, so maybe that's something else to keep an eye on at Old Trafford on Monday. Yeah, no, I was just going to try and dig out Andy Robertson's goal record at Liverpool. It can't be many at all, can it? I mean, three or four, maybe. Yeah, look at his numbers. He's got, oh, he's got eight, eight, eight during his time at Liverpool. Yeah, he's been at the club. This what his, his his sixth season at the club as well. So yeah, who knows? Maybe he's got many fancy football points for assists. Maybe he's he's looking to add the goals this season. He does have that competition going with Trent, doesn't he? Um, Matt, what about yourself? What what are you thinking for the defence? Yeah, the the same really. I think it's it's got to be Gomez, hasn't it? And, and Van Dijk. I think you know we, we mentioned the attacking contribution of of Trent. I think Andy Robertson maybe didn't have the the greatest start to this season as well. I think he's been. I think I'm right in saying he's yet to create a, a chance on the left hand side, which is is you know hugely unusual really for for someone of, of his quality. So yeah, I think the back four picks itself. But I think I'd even more so than Trent. I'd be I'd be wanting to see a little bit more from from him. I think on Monday night. What about your midfield then, Matt? Yeah, midfield again, obviously there's certain options that are unavailable and, and certain ones. I think Naby Keita, there's maybe a bit of a question mark. The fact that he didn't come on at all last Monday is is interesting, but he had a, a really good performance there last season. I'm going to go with Keita. I'm going to go with Henderson as the six and then Harvey Elliott to the right. I think you know, Fabinho's maybe not had the, the greatest few months. I think it's been you know, a bit of a, a difficult time for him. I think... Probably you'd expect the way that the game is going to go that you want someone who really can move the ball quickly and, and shift the ball from, from left to right. So, yeah, Jordan Henderson as the six and, and Elliot and, and Cater very much kind of pressing high intensity front foot, win the ball back and, and go and get some shots away at goal. Interesting. No, no Fabinho. That would be the headline team news. Paul, do you agree with that? No, I think, you know, he hasn't been fired on all cylinders by any stretch, but I st- still think you need your most experienced, your most dependable players in there, particularly at a time when you've got no Thiago, Jones, Oxley, Chamberlain, Keita, there's always a, you know, kind of, whenever it's too sure how fit he is, are we? So I'm going to go with Fabinho, Henderson. And the third one, I'm not too sure. I know Keita was was absolutely flying at all tougher last year before Paul Pogba wiped him out. Um but again, that was another one where he left on a stretch and you're thinking, oh, he's, he's, he must have broke his ankle or something there. And I think he was back for the next game, which shows you that he's not always the most... It'd be harsh to leave Elliot out because I think he's done well, uh, certainly on Monday night. But I'm going to go with Keita. You know, Thiago's out. This is your chance, Naby. Um, Thiago, obviously, he's going to be out for a few weeks, isn't he? So this could be a chance for Keita to really stake a claim, starting with Monday night. Alongside Fabinho and Henderson. No, no one's going Milner then, no. Milner first cab off the rank. Yeah, first, first sub. I think he'll play at some point, but I don't think I don't think he'll start. No, fair enough. I was going to say if if Gorsty had gone with with Milner, are we still calling that Brexit midfield of, of <laughs> Milner and Henderson these days, and, and how long they keep going? But only underlines, doesn't it? Maybe that need for a midfield player, but we'll have to to wait and see if that is to happen in the last few throws of the, the transfer window, probably not likely to be maybe next summer. But Gorsty, what about the, the forward line then? Yeah, no no secrets given the amount of I've talked them up, kind of willed their performance into existence. Uh, Roberto Firmino down the middle with um, Mo Salah on the left and Luis Diaz on the left. Uh, Salah on the right, Diaz on the left, yeah. And uh, Matt, Matt, you can still keep my dream alive of, of Harvey Elliott playing as a false nine, but I don't think you're going to. No, I'm going the same as Gorsty. I think that that kind of picks itself. And I mean, yeah, there is there is a temptation, I think, to have Elliot in that front line just because of the quality that he's got. But for me, he's got to play in that midfield. I think it's that's his best position. That's where he's he's settled this season. And I want to see 
a lot more of, of that kind of triangle that we saw at the start of, of last season with Elliot on the right of the midfield with obviously Salah and, and Trent. I think the more Liverpool can get those three working together and, and get that chemistry going, I think that's that's only going to be a positive. So, yeah, that, that's why I picked him, to be honest, in, in the midfield. And then, obviously, the knock-on is that you then have to leave somebody out and, and went with Fabinho because I think Harvey Elliott was, was a real real bright spark actually against Palace was was pretty good so yeah I think you've you've got to find a way to get him in yeah I forgot I forgot you'd you'd not gone for Fabinho and had him in the midfield yeah no I I, I had completely forgot about that but uh score predictions then Gorsty fancy another 5-0 <laughs> gonna be nice one there uh no I, I I think if Liverpool put in a performance we know they're capable of with the team we've just picked on the team I've just picked. I was, I was going to say, has Liverpool's performance level, though, Fulham aside, Klopp said this in the press conference, he was mm. really pleased with City, not pleased at all with Fulham, really pleased with Palace, especially after going down to 10 men. To me, it it feels like one of those those cliche sayings of they are ready to give someone a beating. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I could see where Klopp was thinking in terms of Liverpool were decent for half an hour in the first half. And he put Palace under a bit of pressure, considering it was ten against eleven for the for the last half an hour. But I didn't see, you know, a type of performance that I did across the autumn of last year, when Liverpool were absolutely flying. Um, they didn't really create anything. You know, they had can't think of any massive chances that you think, well, if you stick that away, Liverpool win, particularly in, in the second half. Um, you know, Carvalho had one that just. just Flash wide, but I think Palace were, were fairly comfortable, really. Um, so Liverpool are going to they're going to have to improve. Um, you could argue that United um, United performances have been far below what Fulham did and what Palace did, but um, you know, this is this is the biggest f- biggest fix in world football, isn't it? Still, so um, they're going to have to turn up. Yeah, no, scored scored inside the first five minutes last season at Old Trafford. Then, then just before the quarter an hour mark, and then absolutely just just tore into them just before half time, didn't they? Did you did you give a score there, Gorsty, or did you avoid that? No, I didn't actually. Um, I'll say I'll say two two one, two one. But Liverpool yeah. scoring first, away win. Yeah, yeah. Matt, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm going to go two nil. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a decent start actually from both teams, but I fancy that Liverpool might just be able to, to get there in the end. So, yeah, finally a goal first in the match for Liverpool, 2 0. Clean sheet as well. If Liverpool score in the first 10 minutes, I think they'll tear them apart. That's that's my prediction. But uh, Matt, I think I think 2 0, 2 1, Gorsty. Yeah, I think they're, they're solid enough predictions. But yeah, it would, will be very interesting to see how fast Liverpool start and if they can get into to Manchester United and see what that then would lead to. <laughs> For both sides, but anyway, that's time for us to go. Gorsi's dog letting us know that we've we've been on far too long today <laughs> on this edition of the Blood Red Podcast. We will, of course, have all the build up and reaction on Monday across the Liverpool Echo website as well as here on the Blood Red channel. But from myself, Guy Clark, Matt Addison, and Paul Gorse, thanks for your time and your company. It's bye for now. <laughs>